everyone. I'm Shaurav from Jal Singh College, currently pursuing B.Sc. Botany Honours, and I'm working on the effect of light of on Palantas plant. On 1st of December, six Palantas plants, which were growing next to each other, were transplanted in different cups at 10 a.m. in the morning. These Six plants were kept under controlled condition, that is, natural setting, for 55 hours. This was done so that the plant could recover from the transplant shock that it might have received the transplantation. No water was provided during these 55 hours as the soil was still moist. After 55 hours, that is, on 3rd of December, six, uh, at 6 p.m., the plants were watered and five of them were put in test condition that is complete darkness in a cardboard box and one plant in controlled condition. For more reliable result, one should use equal number of plants for both tests and in controlled condition. The observation began after the plants were kept in test condition for more than 24 hours, precisely speaking 35 hours. On day one of my observation, that is 5th of December, I started my observation at 10 a.m. and did so till 11.30 p.m. in the night. For test, the result was same throughout the day, that is, the leaves were partially open, whereas the plant in controlled condition showed variation. At 5 a.m., the leaves were partially open. At 8 a.m. and 4 p.m., the leaves were open. At 6 p.m., the leaves were partially closed. And at 9 p.m. and 11 p.m., the leaves were closed completely. For the next two days, the results were same for the both test and control plant that we saw in day one. This is the day two observation. Day three. Uh, when plotting the graph of this, we found that the leaves of plants in test condition were constantly open partially, which is marked with the red line, whereas the one in control condition, the plant showed a sleep wake cycle, that is, circadian rhythm marked with the green line. Thus, we can say that the light does play a role in regulating circadian rhythm in plants. Now, Lehri will tell you about her experiment on the effect of sunset and sunrise on Phalanthus plant. Yes, uh, Lehri. Lahiri, can you please continue? Yeah. Um, this is Lahiri from DKW College, Nalur, Andhra Pradesh. Uh, uh, before going to that, we must know it's the phylanthus, means it's a an small herb and uh, it does not have the woody stem, the and tender stem. Uh, it is well known for medicinal properties. For example, it cures diarrhea, ulcers, cancer. Um, on 24th November, I have started this experiment on Phylanthus. I have collected these plants from my college garden and I have started my observation about the sleep and wake up cycle of these. So my main aim is to know about the Phylanthus sleep wake up cycle is coincide with sunrise and sunset time at certain time intervals or not. So coming to my day one observation, uh, yeah, coming to my day one observation on 24th November, the sunrise and sunset timings are 6.16 a.m. and 5.38 p.m. Uh, so at sunrise time, <laughs> my phalanthus leaves were started to open at 5.50 a.m. and uh, they have totally <coughs> opened at 6.10 a.m. Means before sunrise time, they were open totally. Uh, coming to sunset time, the leaves were triggered to close at 4.50 p.m. and totally closed at 5 p.m. means before the sunset time. So here uh, uh, the data have showed that leaf closing and uh, opening time was not coincide with sunset and sunrise time. So uh, coming to, uh, yeah. mm, these were the images for day one observation.
coming to day two observation uh, on 25th november uh, the sunrise and sunset timing so 6 60 am and 5 38 pm at sunrise time uh, as same as day one observation they these were started to open at 5 50 am means before sunrise time leaves were totally closed at 6 10 am at sunset time the leaves were triggered to close at 4 50 am and totally closed at 5 pm means before sunset time so here also the data showed that leaf closing and opening time not coincide with sunrise and sunset time coming to day three observation yeah on 26th november the sunrise and sunset timings were 6 16 am and 5 38 pm so at sunrise time the leaves were started to open at 5 50 am and totally opened at 6 10 am means before sunrise time uh, coming to sunset time the leaves were triggered to close at 4 50 pm and totally closed at 5 pm so um, in my view the opening and closing was not coincide with sunrise and sunset time so uh, there is a something happening uh, without um, with, if with the outside mechanism it is not, not coinciding some internal crop mechanism and is more and that is biological yeah biological clock is not the plants are controlled by one internal clock mechanism known to be as biological <laughs> clock this means uh, this mechanism in plants that allows organisms to anticipate prepare for daily and seasonal environmental changes finally concluded that in plant cell there is a new, uh, the internal clock mechanism will be done in the plant cell uh, there is a nucleus and inside that nucleus chromosomes are present in, uh, in every chromosome the dna is present and sessions of the dna which are known to be as genes uh, here the dna made up of tiny molecules called nucleotides that hook up together the sequence code for protein which that plant gene needs so gene is involved here. This process makes gene active means leaf open and gene is inactive means then the leaf closes. So there is an internal clock mechanism involved that showed in my model. Thank you. Mm, this was the plan. So. Uh, yes, Sakshi, go ahead. Uh, forward to the next slide. Um, so the file in this plant, it is uh, not only connected. It is not only connected to the sleep wake cycle, but it has also uh, insect plant interactions in it. Uh, moving on to my story of my story of how I got caterpillar on uh, feeding on phyllanthus plant. I was also growing these phyllanthus plant in my home lab uh, to study the sleep wake cycle of it. And uh, I was having two species of phyllanthus plant, that is phyllanthus amarus and phyllanthus uh, urinaria. So uh, once uh, in, in August, I got to see uh, a caterpillar feeding on phyllanthus leaves, phyllanthus amarus leaves. And that was very surprising because I haven't seen, uh, haven't seen any, uh, any caterpillar or uh, any moth laying eggs on phyllanthus plant. So it was very new to me. That time I started culturing this uh, caterpillar in my home lab. For culturing this caterpillar, I just took, took the container and that uh, I kept this caterpillar along with some phyllanthus leaves. Uh, once there were times that I was, uh, I was not having enough phyllanthus leaves, so, uh, as suggested by some of the cubists, I I gave the caterpillar uh, some pea 
peas, green peas and cabbage leaves to eat. But uh, that was the biggest goof up of goof of goof up of mine. Uh, as after giving the green peas and cabbage leaves, uh, the caterpillar died. So uh, also that was the only caterpillar I was having. So uh, I I should not have done the this ex this kind of experiment with the caterpillar. So uh, after that again I was in the practical examination of mine. At that time, we had this phylanthus phylanthus plant as a identification part. So that time, our lab assistant assistant has given the phylanthus plants to all of us. And in that phylanthus plant, I got uh, again I got the same caterpillar. So at that time, I cultured that caterpillar in a container, and I did not give any other leaves to uh, leaves for it to eat. So uh, I cultured it with only giving phylanthus urinaria leaves, and um, on the left side, on the right side, uh, you can see the picture of the moth, which was emerged from that caterpillar. And uh, I've also identified its species, and it is known as uh, Spodoptera litura. It is also known as tobacco cutworm. So this was my story of uh, caterpillar and phylanthus. Uh, now it is not the it is not only the caterpillar, but one of the cubists named Sha. She is from RJ College, and uh, she she was also uh, growing growing this phalanthus leaves, and she was trying to identify the phalanthus plant. At that time, she observed in one of her phalanthus plant, uh, she got. Uh, she saw some uh, white white color infection on it, and after observing carefully, she got to know that it was the white fly infection. And yeah, this is the white fly infection, and this was the first known uh, first known horizontal gene transfer in plants to white fly. So yeah, this. This is what uh, we observed. Thank you uh, so much, uh, Philanthus collaborators, to present this work.